Um, so uh, one, one of the things that I'm interested in doing in my research is um, looking at um, socialist uh, urbanism and also post-socialist urbanism, or what, uh, I, uh, what you could call still socialist urbanism, by, uh, by means of ideas which are not only ideas imported from Western critical theory or from Western urban theory, not only looking at the socialist city through the lens of kind of uh, Foucauldian biopolitics or, uh, or through the lens of, of kind of, uh, you know, American anthropologists' ideas about neoliberalism or, uh, or through the lens of, or, or through sort of Jacques Rancière's aesthetic philosophy or whatever, um, but also uh, trying to look at um, socialist cities and socialist culture and also post-socialist culture or still socialist culture um, through the lens of ideas that are somehow taken from uh, the, the, uh, the socialist city and from socialist culture itself. So from, in anthropology there's a distinction that anthropologists have always made, well they have, have uh, made on and off uh, I suppose um, between emic and etic ideas, between an emic or an etic anthropological analysis. So an etic anthropological analysis is one which takes an idea derived from the kind of the, the, the ethnographer's uh, arsenal of, of theory, an idea from elsewhere, and applies it to uh, to the anthropological setting, to the ethnographic field site, whereas an emic idea is an idea that's taken from that field site itself, and then that idea is um, is, um, is is kind of deployed or, or, or is used to try and understand that place. Um, so I think it makes sense um, increasingly to try, although people are, it, it's it's very tempting. Uh, if you've just come out of a PhD and you've been bombarded with, with Foucault and with Rancière to just see everything, or, or especially Bruno Latour or Gilles Deleuze, to see everything through, through, through the lens of rhizomes and, and arborescent blah blah blah. Um, but sometimes it's much more interesting and more productive and probably produces a more, um, a more useful analysis to, take, to try to take some ideas uh, from the place where you, which you're studying and to try to make a genuine effort to understand them. Uh, and then to apply them not only when in your discussions with your informants, but also in your analysis, also in the way that you write up the findings of your, of your fieldwork. And socialist urbanism is um, a particularly interesting example of, um, is, 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 a, is a particularly rich field, to use this uh, agricultural metaphor that uh, anthropologists are fond of using, for, um, for these kinds of ideas, partly I mean, as, is, as is socialist culture in general. Um, uh, 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 for, for, perf for the perfectly obvious reason that socialist culture was produced, was, was made by, uh, by, by theorists, also by theorists who were, who were uh, schooled in, in Marxist theory or in various kind of interpretations of Marxist theory and who applied that Marxist theory in, 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 in and who applied that very, uh, that Marxist theory to the very process of building socialism, so, and to the process of building the socialist city. So the actual, the, the history of the socialist city, but also the story of its unravelling, is, is, is very much a story in which the, the line between the theory and the practice uh, of, of Marxism becomes blurred, because here you have a theory which is being employed by people who are more or less theoretically trained in order to actually produce a social life, in order to engineer a social life, and in order to envision and then to actually put into practice uh, an, an urban environment. So you have the city which is, which is built on the basis of a kind of of a, of, a, of, a, of a kind of critical theory which, ha which has a lot in common with the critical theories, in fact, uh, that um, a lot of social theorists, both in uh, Eastern Europe and in Western Europe and North America, wherever, throughout the world, are, are trained in. So you have this extraordinary opportunity to apply uh, ideas which are somehow related to your own kind of theoretical arsenal, but also are uh, ideas which are, uh, um, which are connected to those ideas which are being used on, uh, which were used in order to build the socialism that you are examining. So you have, uh, th th another way of talking about this is not necessarily through the language of emic versus etic ideas, but also through the language of, uh, of, of, of the idea of the vernacular, of a kind of language which was spoken, uh, which is spoken by the people which you study and which it is your job as a, as a, as a scholar to analyse. So um, the interesting thing in, about Marxism, Leninism itself is that Marxism and Leninism is a sort of vernacular, is a, is a, is a, is a Russian uh, vernacular which was formulated at the end of the 19th century, at the beginning of the 20th century, in order to translate Marxism, the sort of canonical uh, Marxist texts, 
to the uh, to, uh, to 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 foment a revolutionary situation in in Russia and to render them applicable in the context of of the former Russian Empire. And then, in the context of the socialist city, you have further branchings out of this kind of vernacular. So you have kind of sub-vernaculars of Marxism, uh, urbanist sub-vernaculars of Marxism, uh, which are employed by Marxist theorists of the city, by socialist urbanists who haven't necessarily read that much Marx, or who have read some Marx, uh, but, and, and not necessarily read that much Lenin either, but who nevertheless consider themselves Marxists, or for, who for conjunctural reasons, or who for genuine and the ideological reasons employ these, um, employ these Marxist ideas and, and use them to, to, to construct the socialist city. So, so um, if we're talking uh, about these emic or vernacular Marxisms, um, there's an example of, a, of, a, of an article published in 2017 um, by Anna Kruglova, who's an anthropologist based at the High School of Economics in Moscow, in which she traces the way in which people use, in which her informants in the city of Pierm in, uh, in Siberia use, uh, employ uh, a, a particular forms of, of vernacular Marxism simply in their everyday, in their everyday conversations. And you can use a similar approach to figuring out how people employ uh, something some, uh, some sort of vernacular which is connected to Marxism in various ways in the context of the professional practice of building the socialist city. So you can try and take ideas from, uh, you, you can look through texts and also talk to architects, who's, th th those architects who are working in Moscow or in Warsaw today are architects who, while especially the more established generation of architects and urbanists and planners, uh, still are from the generation where they had to be relatively fluent in a kind of Marxist urban vernacular in order to work. So you can still trace how this Marxist urban vernacular uh, continues to exist in the way that they theorize and they think about a city which they, in many cases, as architects now working for uh, capitalist developers, are in the process of deconstructing, of deconstructing the very city which they themselves have built. So. In any case, the, 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 the work of these, uh, of these urban theorists and of these architects is full of interesting and, and full of very rich uh, uh, emic or, or vernacular ideas um, which, can, uh, which, can really, uh, in, uh, which can enrich and inform the way in which we think about socialist cities. So one, one of these examples of these ideas which I'm particularly interested in is the idea of the social condenser. This is an idea which is uh, 90 years old. It was formulated in 1927 uh, by the the, um, by the construct by, by Soviet constructivists, by people like Moisey Ginzburg and Ivan Leonidov, uh, and and others, and it was an idea um, uh, which was formulated actually in 1927 on the 10th anniversary of the October Revolution as a socialny condensator in, in in Russian, which um, which which refers to the condensator in in Russian and also uh, condenser uh, in. Uh, previously in English was a word which, ref which referred to an electrical transformer, which used to be called in English an electrical condenser. So a machine for, uh, for changing, the, for either intensifying or de-intensifying the way a current flows through an electrical circuit. So in the context of the 1920s, this, in the context of a time that was fascinated with electricity, in the context of a time fascinated with electrification, where everyone knows Lenin's famous quote that, uh, Soviet, that everyone knows Lenin's famous quote that communism equals Soviet power plus the electrification of the entire country. Um, this, 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 this sort of fascination of the, of the kind of, of the power of electricity um, was, 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 see, was taken on as a metaphor by Ginzburg, by Leonidov, and by the by the constructivists by by the constructivists who were strictly speaking constructivists who belonged to the organization of contemporary architects which was the the grouping uh, to which the the which, which grouped together the architectural constructivists and they took this term and they used it as a as a as a general term um, f formulated for the 10th anniversary of the, of the of the October revolution to um, to sort of define what it was um, that distinguished um, the architecture of the post-revolutionary era from the architecture of the pre-revolutionary era. So as the editorials of Sovremenna Architectura and also the, the, the text of Ginzburg and Leonidov published in, in Contemporary Architecture in Sovremenna Architectura, which was the main mouthpiece of the constructivists, uh, constantly repeated, 
the idea of the social consensus was, 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 was this was the very idea which, was, which would distinguish uh, the modernism, the avant-garde modernism of the post-October period from the avant-garde modernism which was practiced in capitalist countries, which was practiced in the West, and also from the, from the, uh, from the, from the modern architecture which, was, which, which existed in Russia before the revolution. So the, so the social condenser was a term which was, um, in, in, in a sense, it was a sort of metaphor for, uh, which, which could be applied to architecture at all scales. It could be applied to residential architecture, it could be applied to um, um, it could be applied to public buildings. It could be applied to public space, and also to the to the planning of the city as a whole. Um, and it was very much a metaphor for, for thinking about how you could design this sort of this kind of uh, this sort of ideological intensity into the city. Uh, in effect, how you could kind of elect through architecture electrocute the users of architecture and the inhabitants of the city to, to forge a kind of collectivity and to become and to become communists. Um, so it was a very, it was a very powerful idea, which um, existed for a very brief period of time. It only existed, in effect, it was only used by the constructivists. It was very, it was, it was used very frequently on the pages of contemporary architecture of Severin Arquitectura during 1927 and 1928. Um, but then it was it suddenly disappeared from uh, from from sort of regular usage and kind of uh, and, and 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 fizzled out. And the social condenser, as such, was basically forgotten about. The idea of the micro rayon is a, is an idea that was um, is mostly associated with the Khrushchev era and with the Brezhnev era, with 60s and 70s um, Soviet town planning, and it refers to a kind of multifunctional residential unit, which is uh, which is planned and, and and made normally of prefabricated buildings, but which consists not only of residential buildings themselves, but also of district clubs, of, of sports facilities, of leisure facilities, of commercial facilities, etc., etc. So very much a, a sort of self-sustained um, uh, uh, unit in which people could live uh, their lives in a, in a sort of rich variety of ways. Th this idea was in, was in fact initially formulated in the in the um, in the in the pre-war era in the 1930s and was a sort of uh, and was a kind of uh, idea which had a lot of kinship with the social condenser and which emerged in in conversation with the notion of the social condenser. However, the, so the micro rayon re-emerged in the 60s. Uh, the social condenser was uh, was more or less uh, um, forgotten about as an explicitly articulated idea, but then it re-emerged again also in the 1960s. So in, in my work on the Palace of Culture in, in Warsaw, which was uh, which is a sort of multifunctional skyscraper built during the Stalin era, um, um, but still existing today, uh, I present the Palace of Culture as a type of social condenser. Jane Rendell talks about the um, the social housing of London, which is being demolished or which is being subjected to this kind of uh, to this kind of uh, uh, devastating kind of prettification as a type of social condenser, which is being lost. Um, uh, you can also think in this in a similar way about the um, about the social housing of the of the Khrushchev era in in Moscow. So the so the uh, the Khrushchevki, which are currently being well, which are on the which many of which were already demolished during the Lushkov era um, during the first twenty years of of uh, of the of um, of post Soviet Moscow. Uh, there is a, a, as many people. Th th there is a, there is a, a grand new scheme that the current uh, Moscow city government is pursuing of demolishing uh, uh, up to uh, four and a half thousand. In fact, over over five thousand uh, Khrushchev era buildings um, and replacing them in all probability with with sort of uh, cheaply built developer uh, developer um, developer enriching housing. Uh, and uh, it's possible to present, I think, in a certain way, the Khrushchevki, the, 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 the post-war housing program of the, of the post-war Soviet Union was notable not only for its scale, not only for uh, its um, its its vast reach, not only for the pure number, not 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 only for the vast number of people it was able to house in a short period of time, but also as um, scholars like Mark Smith, the historian Mark Smith, and uh, and, and Steve Harris uh, have pointed out it's also notable for the extent to which it mixed different social groups within these buildings. So the, there was a very carefully and, and, and consciously articulated uh, practice, not only in the Soviet Union, but in other Eastern European countries too, and also to some extent in the welfare states of, of Western Europe, North America, South America, and, and elsewhere, of, of social mixing in, uh, in the, uh, within the sort of uh, within the within the social housing that was built in the post-war era, and you. 
you could say that the that the um, Khrushchev era housing of the 1960s and 19 and then later the Brezhnev era housing of the 1970s was was one of the most sort of ex, uh, was one of the most uh, triumphant examples of this kind of social mixing of the transformation of a of a, of a social fabric through uh, mixing different kinds of uh, categories mixing intelligentsia, working class people, uh, actors, uh, doctors, uh, and uh, as, as many different layers of society as you possibly could in one uh, place, in, 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 sort of in particular housing blocks. And it's this, um, it's this social condenser it's, uh, which, uh, which perhaps could be represented as the greatest social condenser of all time because of its scope and because of the different amount of people that were mixed through this housing, which is being dismantled, which, which is arguably being dismantled today uh, uh, through these kinds of um, programs, which are mostly de de designed to benefit developers uh, and um, and private interests rather than those of the of the city itself and of the people who inhabit it.